Welcome to the Boomer Woman's Podcast. I'm your host, Agnes Knowles. Boomer. Some people don't like the term, but I think, like many other words, it's all in how you say it. My umbrella business is Boom with a Bang, and I think we should keep that in mind as much as possible. We Boomer women don't have a lot of role models as we traverse this chapter, so the goal of this podcast is to introduce you to guests who might incentivize, encourage, teach you to embrace your wisdom, our wisdom. With this incarnation of the Boomer Woman's Podcast, I'm interviewing people who have a message of interest for our demographic. If you want to hear about or learn about something specific, let me know and I'll find someone who understands us to talk about it. There's a contact page at boomwithabang.com. If you want to be a guest on podcast or know someone who would be a great guest, message me. Finally, this show is all about conversation. We women know its value, we know how to do it, and we must perpetuate the art form. So let's get started with today's show. Welcome to the Boomer Woman's Podcast. I'm your host, Agnes Knowles. Last week, I spoke with Terry Uzon, CEO and founder of Hemp Lily. Hemp Lily provides natural, cannabis-based alternatives for many issues that women experience. Hot flashes, night sweats, stress, sleep, to name a few. Now, last year, I spoke with an urban cannabis farmer from Ontario, and he was so knowledgeable about the biochemistry of cannabis and the endocannabinoid system within our bodies that I decided to pull excerpts from my conversation with Alexis and follow last week's conversation with his information. Now, Alexis and I spoke for two hours, and I have edited that down to 30 minutes of information. For this reason, there are places where the conversation might sound clipped. It was. (laughs) <laughs> Over the course of two hours, Alexis also talked about growing cannabis and touched on making your own medicines in their different forms, ointments, tinctures, edibles. Today, I wanted only to give you the basic science behind cannabis. I do encourage you to listen to both episodes of my conversation with Alexis to hear the full context of our conversation, cannabis, growing cannabis, different cultivars, and also to learn more about the other herbs and natural remedies. Right now, let's jump into my conversation with Alexis Burnett of Organic Row Canada. In 2018, when cannabis was legalized in Canada, I started uh, a a new sort of venture business called Organic Grow Canada. And I really wanted to just teach people how to grow and use cannabis medicine in um, a safe and in an effective way. Uh, I have been working with this for for well over 20 years as well, but it was really just in the last few years that it was something that I would share with the public a little bit more. But I've seen cannabis work in in amazing ways with everything from uh, a good friend in in your neck of the woods in British Columbia that had pancreatic cancer in the late 90s. I lived in, in BC and cannabis was one of the only things that really helped him regain his appetite um, and to help him manage the pain. And, and he chose that over the pharmaceutical medicines that he used. And, and I have many other people that I've, I've just seen cannabis work in, in amazing ways. It's not a panacea. Uh, um, it doesn't heal everything as some sort of marketers would like you to believe, but it definitely helps with the quality of life. And with the lack of quality information, that's part of why I started Organic Grow Canada really was to get um, good information out to the public and to teach people how to work with this plant because it's it's an amazing plant and I sometimes say it's a master plant or a sacred plant that has traveled all over the world and it's been helping people for thousands and thousands of years, at least 5,000 years documented scientifically, but I'm quite sure it's been used for for much longer. So I have a love and a passion for this plant. And it's something that I I really want to share and teach people how to grow quality organic cannabis and then to turn it into um, uh, good products that they can use uh, for health and healing. And sometimes what I found with cannabis is that it it adds just to your your quality of life or it can it can work really well for a number of things. But I, I see a lot of people using it for pain and inflammation. And just to have a better quality of life or to limit your pain is something that can make a huge difference in people's lives. I prefer to call it cannabis now. Um, marijuana was was kind of a bit of a derogatory term um, that that came about uh, with prohibition. 
And cannabis has an interesting history if you look at prohibition and, and why it came about. And, and I know that's not the question right now, but I just want to kind of start there that it, it is a plant that's been used, as I said earlier, for thousands and thousands of years, but it, it's only been about 100 years of prohibition in this country. So I start by, by calling it cannabis. Cannabis sativa would be its, its Latin name or its scientific name. The THC is, um, is what is the active, one of the active ingredients within cannabis. And the, the THC is what's responsible for the psychotropic effects. So that's what people would maybe call getting high, or it's like that, that sometimes uplifting, sometimes sedative effects often um, are attributed to the THC. And THC has many different medicinal qualities. Um, so there's many ways that it, it can be used, everything from helping with sleep and managing pain, uh, managing inflammation, headaches, uh, and so on. So that's tetrahydrocannabidiol now, and that's THC. Now, CBD is another cannabinoid, which is found within cannabis, cannabidiol. Now, cannabis has dozens of cannabinoids that are found within it, but THC and CBD would be the, the main ones that people know the most about. There's also CBG and THCB um, and many other ones that we're starting to learn a lot more about now that uh, there's a lot more scientific literature and, and studies that are, are being done. But those are, are two of the main constituents that we find in cannabis. There's also the terpenes, which terpenes are found in many plants and trees in, in, uh, found throughout nature and, and in our gardens. And, and they're responsible for giving the plants their smell. So that uh, smell that comes with cannabis, if you've ever smelt it, um, you, you know that it has a fairly distinct smell. Some people think it's a, a skunk-like odor. There's many different types of cannabis, um, various cultivars or what we may call chemovars, um, which is just basically a, a chemovar is looking at, at the types of constituents or active medicinal ingredients that are found within uh, a specific cultivar or a specific plant. So the terpenes, though, uh, work synergistically with the cannabinoids and, and they help to moderate and produce a lot of the effects that, that we get when we, when we use cannabis. So there's many different terpenes that are found. There's about 30 that are found in what we would call significant amount in cannabis to be considered therapeutic, but there's upwards of uh, well over 100 different terpenes that can be found in cannabis. So I hope that helps to kind of start to lay a foundation of the, the ingredients and the constituents that are in cannabis. Uh, maybe I mentioned more than you. you. <laughs> when we started, you said something about, you know, your friend who had cancer, it helped him regain his appetite. I know people who use it for pain. What are some of the other medicinal uses for cannabis big umbrella yeah so there's many ways to use it and i'm sure we'll talk a little bit more later about the different products that can be made from cannabis so depending on whether you're using salves or tinctures or glycerites edibles so mixing your cannabis with with butter there's many different ways than that we can use cannabis many of your listeners may think back to to days in their their youth when they used cannabis um, in the form of joints or smoking and inhalation but um, and many people still use it in that way um, sometimes we think of uh, inhalation as being more of a breakthrough medication so if someone's suffering from pain and they're, they're a little uh, finding themselves sort of debilitated or the pain is really coming on strong, then, then inhalation can be a good method. But I often mention to people that taking cannabis internally is actually probably a better form for mo uh, a way of taking it for most conditions. So as I mentioned, it's definitely being used in many different cancer treatments. Now that's going to be a very intense, maybe not intense way, but it's um, cancers, there's a lot to it. So I, I'm not recommending that you just go out and start using cannabis. Make sure you, you uh, speak to your doctor, speak to a qualified nurse practitioner that can help you with that. But definitely many people have had great success using cannabis for things like cancer, um, a lot of neurodegenerative diseases, things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, there's, there's some studies that are coming out that are, are lending support to cannabis being used in that way. So one of the nice things about legalization is now there's a lot of money um, being thrown towards scientific uh, research so that we're starting to find out 
the more of, of why and how cannabis works. So in the past, many people knew anecdotally that cannabis helps and it works for them, but we didn't always know why. So now we're finding that, that there's studies that are coming out each day, daily and weekly. There's dozens of studies almost that come out that are supporting some of the claims that people have known for, for many generations, but definitely helping with things like anxiety, sleep. I've had some friends that use it for um, psoriasis and for various skin conditions when it's used topically. We, we already mentioned pain and inflammation are good ones as well. It, it is helpful and, and it can work for many, many conditions. It doesn't cure everything per se, but it can definitely help people manage their symptoms. And in, in many cases, it can help to cure um, certain diseases in the body as well. I'm, I'm, I'm going to insert here the quick usual rider that this is a podcast conversation. And if someone's listening, don't say, oh, I've got that issue and go and buy everything on the cannabis shelf. Stay in touch with your medical professionals and also a professional cannabis person like you. I mean, you obviously have this information and, and knowledge and I, I appreciate that, but I just want to slip that in there. Now, now we've talked about the medicinal properties. Can someone get actually high? from using cannabis medicinal products? Well, definitely you can. It, it, is a, it is a plant that you want to be, and a medicine that you want to be careful of. You, you want to take some precautions when you take it. But one of the interesting things that, that sometimes people don't realize is that you don't need to get high for it to work medicinally. Now, some people, many people like that experience, just like a lot of people like the experience that comes when they drink alcohol. Now, alcohol is definitely, I think, not nearly as safe as cannabis. There's there's some potential side effects that, that will come from cannabis use, but you don't have to worry about, um, say, overdosing, which you would on on certain certain drugs or pharmaceutical medicines. So you can't necessarily take too much, but you can experience those psychotropic effects that come from THC that can be uh, definitely impairing. But what I like to mention to, to folks is that when you're using cannabis as medicine, and when you're using it, especially for, for chronic type conditions, it's best in my mind. Now, each condition is going to be a little bit different, but to take it internally. So when, when you smoke cannabis, it enters your bloodstream quite quickly and people will feel those psychotropic effects fairly quickly. When we take it internally in the form of an oil or a tincture, it takes longer to enter the bloodstream and its effects will last a little bit longer. But what I like to tell people is you want to find out what your minimum effective dose is. So I call that the MED. And you always want to remember to start low and go slow. So I mean, start low with your dosage. So you're just taking a few drops at a time. And a healthcare practitioner can help you with this. Or when you're if you buy from some of the licensed producers, there's often going to be some recommendations on the label. And what I tell the people is when you're starting out with cannabis, you just take a few drops at a time until you get to the point where you're starting to feel those psychotropic effects or that quote unquote high effect. And then you back off your dosage a little bit. So within our bodies, we all have what's called an endocannabinoid system. Within our bodies, almost pretty much all mammals have an endocannabinoid system and we produce cannabinoids within our body. Anandamine, the bliss molecule is one that we produce in our body. But then with cannabis, there's the phytocannabinoids that are found within the plant, such as THC and CBD. So when we take those internally, they bind to the receptor sites in our own endo endocannabinoid system, and they can start to help us with the symptoms. This is sort of an, an easier way to understand it. So you don't need to get get high, you just want to have that minimum effective dose, because it's going to be hard for some people to operate if they're not used to using cannabis. They don't want to be walking around high all day. So you want to just take a small amount. The studies have really found that having a balance of THC to CBD within the cannabis that you're using can produce up to 300 times more beneficial results than using just CBD on its own or just THC. So as I mentioned earlier, THC is what is uh, responsible for giving you the psychotropic effects. And CBD doesn't really do that within your body. You don't have that impairment from CBD. And that's partly why people like 
seem to kind of gravitate more towards CBD, but just know that having a little THC within that medicine is going to help to, to balance it out and to actually be more potent. And you'll probably realize that you have better effects in relief from your symptoms when you use um, a little THC with your CBD medicine. And just to kind of clarify, these are just the cannabinoids that are found within the plant. Cannabis, there's many different varieties, but they, they can have CBD and THC in the same plant, or some plants will have a lot of THC and very little CBD. So when you're doing your research, looking for um, what we would call a one-to-one cultivar that has the same amount of CBD to the same amount of THC, um, generally is going to be an, a good place for people to start. In case one of our listeners, or some of our listeners, probably most of our listeners, are they, they've never used the products. They're cannabis curious, shall we say. So they're, they're going into this still with a little bit of nervousness or hesitancy. Is there like a do you recommend a cream to begin or tincture? Like where would they start just to get used to the fact that cannabis? Yeah, I think um, you want to do your research. So you want to find someone that you can learn from or, or a a website or, you know, definitely it's best to learn directly from someone if you can, or at least find someone that you can trust if it's, if it's online. And then, as I said, I think the moniker to really remember is that start low and go slow. So just start with a very small amount of cannabis. And as I said, just start to uptake your dosage just a little bit at a time until you start to to feel those effects from the cannabis and then taper it off. So each condition is going to be a a little bit different, but I would recommend if you're, if it's a, a more chronic type condition or something that's a bit more ongoing that you take cannabis internally in the form of a tincture or an oil. Now, I do want to just mention that most of what you'll find on the legal market today that's called a tincture is actually an an infused oil. From the the herbal world, we consider a tincture um, an extract that's made using alcohol. And uh, an infused oil is one that's made using oil. So most of what you'll find on the market is a concentrated form of cannabis that's mixed with an MCT oil, which is basically a a fractionated odorless coconut oil that stays in the oil form at room temperature. And they call that a tincture. You know, I I maybe don't need to split hairs over it, but I, I sometimes do. Um, But taking an oral product, ingesting it, I think is a a good place to start. We don't, you don't want people to have a bad first experience with cannabis because there's, uh, there's ways that cannabis can really be helpful for a lot of us. If you think about people that are living with pain, there's a lot of people today and and a lot of your listeners, I'm sure that are living with, with pain and inflammation in their body. And they're like, wow, I, I want to, I've heard about cannabis. I heard it can really help so-and-so down the block says it really works for them. And so does so-and-so and and that. So I'm going to try it. And then I'll, I'll, if they take it and they take too much, they can have an impaired experience where it's not, it may not be pleasant. They'll get, you'll get through it, but it's not a pleasant experience. And then that may be enough for someone to say, I'm never going to try cannabis again. And then they could really be missing out on it. So on, on a healthy, more healthy life. Like if you can just take, like, let's say you're living with a pain threshold of, I don't know, eight. And all of a sudden you start to take a little bit of cannabis and you take it in a moderate way, in a good way. And all of a sudden your pain threshold goes from eight to four. That's a big difference in your quality of life. The way you get out of bed with a little bit of less and aches and pains in your body and how you go throughout your day, that can affect how you look at yourself, how you view your own health. It can affect how you treat others in your family. There's so many spin-off effects. So I just always mention to people, go slow with it, with your dosage and start small. And especially if you're recommending it to people, because we want them to have a good experience. It's not about getting high. Um, it's about returning to, to health. Um, and it's about healing, at least in the, the context that we're talking about today. And when I talked about our, we all have the, what's called an ECS or an endocannabinoid system in our body. So cannabis affects us differently, whereas I may have a higher tolerance to cannabis and I use it more, more than a lot of or some people. I can take more cannabis without feeling those effects or I can manage those impairing uh, psychotropic effects 
Whereas someone else may take half of what I take and, and still be, they could really feel those psychotropic effects. So again, just, I can, can't stress it enough, just start low and go slow and try to work with, with someone that, that you trust, you know, that, that can help you kind of moving through. It's really not like super complicated. I'm just sort of mentioning this because you, you want to be, you do want to be, be careful with it, but it is legal to use. And as I said, it's not really about getting high. It's, it's about managing your, your pain or managing your health. So if you just start slow and uh, start low and go slow, um, you shouldn't have any issues. A friend of mine who is caregiver for her elderly mother who has advanced dementia, when her mother's dementia really ramps up even more, um, behaviors start getting really erratic. She uses an oral CBD oil to calm her mother down. It works really quickly. And is that the same sort of thing? It, it can be, yeah. No, the CBD is generally, in general, a little bit more sedating than than. And there, there are some studies coming out with with uh, uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's that and, and dementia, sorry, that are showing it's it's it can be helpful for for many seniors and helping them to manage some of those symptoms um, such as agitation and things like that. So there's definitely some research coming out that that CBD is is really helpful with that. With things like dementia, it's also uh, can really help to reduce inflammation, reduce sort of oxygen uh, buildup. It, it stimulates the brain, I believe, and, and reduces sort of the decline of memory and, and brain function. So I think those are some of the ways that that cannabis um, is helping. You can, I know there's some websites on some of those, uh, like the Alzheimer's dementia website that you can go to and, and they go, get into some of the more extensive detail on, on how that works. But there's definitely some intriguing and interesting research that's, that's coming out. And the nice thing about plant medicine in general is you often don't get the side effects that come with pharmaceuticals. So Pharmaceuticals have their place. Allopathic medicine definitely has its place. We, we've we've um, advanced and, you know, for things like diagnosis and for, you know, x-rays and breaks and surgeries and things. Allopathic medicine is, is amazing. Antibiotics, they, they can work so well for us. But there is a lot of side effects that, that come. If, if you listen to some of those American pharmaceutical company commercials, where, where all of a sudden at the end, the guy talks really fast or the lady talks really fast. Uh, see, we, I don't think pharmaceutical companies can, can uh, promote their products in Canada. So we don't really get those commercials other than, than the inundation of American media. But let's see, I'm getting a little off topic on that. But uh, yeah, so to back up, like the plant medicine, it, it's, it's a lot more of a temperate type medicine. And this may be a good place to talk just briefly about like the difference between isolates and what we would call full spectrum cannabis medicine. So sometimes like with CBD, let's say your friend that's using your friend's mother using it for dementia. Sometimes you'll get CBD as just an isolate. So it's just CBD. So they've isolated the CBD from the cannabis plant and that can work for people. But what the studies show is that a full spectrum plant medicine so using all the parts of the flower and getting all the different chemical constituents. So in the case of cannabis, having a balance of THC, CBD, the terpenes, the carotenoids, carotenoids, flavonoids, and so on that are in the cannabis, it's kind of like a matrix. It's, it's all these constituents that are working together synergistically. So that's one of the beautiful things in my mind about herbal medicine is that some constituents will temper other ones or they may make other ones more potent or work as catalysts in a way. So for things like CBD will help to temper the psychoactive uh, effects of THC. So that's a really important way, um, reason to have CBD in your cannabis medicine because it helps to temper it down because of the, the CB receptors that it, it binds to within, within the body. So all the constituents, you're getting everything. And that's why we often don't get the same side effects that, that you'll get from taking pharmaceuticals. It's one of the reasons. Because even to this day, I, I think 75 or 80% of pharmaceutical medicines are plant-based. They, they come from plants. 
those chemical constituents, at least that's where they were first discovered and isolated from. So in the case of, let's say, something like St. John's wort, which is kind of known as the antidepressant medicine, it's, it's the hypericum is one of the active ingredients that they isolate from the, will isolate from the St. John's wort. But we're not getting that whole like matrix or all of those constituents that are found within the plant medicine. And that's why I think it's really important to look for, for full spectrum medicine or whole plant medicine, as opposed to isolates. Isolates kind of have a, a time and a place, but when we work with cannabis, all the research that's coming out is showing that having a nice balance of THC to CBD and a full spectrum medicine is, is usually, uh, it's from three to 300 times more uh, effective or better results in symptom management than, uh, than taking just an isolate on its own. But yeah, I think it's, you know, I'm passionate about it. I, I love this plant. I think there's so much that it has to offer. I think it's coming at a time where, you know, it's really needed. There's a lot of elderly and aging population that, as I mentioned a number of times that are dealing with pain and, and neurodegenerative diseases and things that I think cannabis can really shine and it can really help um, those people. So I, I just, I really want to get the word out. And I think when you're passionate about something, uh, you just dive in to it. You know, a lot of what I do in my life is what I do for work and what I do for fun and what I do with my kids. And it's all kind of the same. As I said earlier, the science is kind of catching up and, and the science is, is happening because in the past, no, no universities could get grants to run studies on cannabis because it was because it was illegal. And even in the U.S., because it's not federally legal yet, which I think it will be soon, it's, it's hard to run some research. But there's so much happening now. So I love to just kind of dive down the rabbit hole of, of the science of it. And, you know, I, I have a lot to learn. Um, you know, I'm kind of now I'm like, oh, wow, look, I can I can dive into this stuff in this way. You know, I'm I'm a little more of an intuitive kind of person where I, I like, you know, what I can kind of sense and feel. And I don't always need to know the science behind it. But we live in a world where um, a lot of people won't believe anything unless the science backs it up. Um, you know, so the science is helpful, I think, for cannabis in that regard. But, you know, there's a lot of people that have worked with this plant for for dozens and dozens of years that they just know it works. And you don't have to know the science. Sometimes, like I, I say, you know, I don't need to know that elderberry syrup helps me when, when I'm getting sick or, you know, that yarrow helps me with a fever you know, or echinacea helps to boost my immune system. I don't need to know all the ways and the mechanisms of action within my body because I know it works because it's helped me and it's helped my children and it's helped people in my life. But it sure is nice to kind of have an idea of why it, it works or how it works. But it's, it's a different lens to view the world. I, I think I would say, you know, I have a lot of First Nations friends and I work with some First Nations communities. And I really love the way that First Nations people view view the world, that Indigenous way of, of viewing the world. Or I study Qigong and, and Tai Chi, and I, I love some of those Eastern traditions. So I think science is an, an amazing thing, and it, but it's really, it's one lens to view the world through. And I, I think it's important to realize that, you know, we all view the world in different ways, whether it's a spiritual way, a religious way. How, a scientific way, however we view the world, it's, um, it's the way that we view the world and experience it. So, you know, when you're, when you're passionate about things, you, you just kind of dive into them. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of smiling. I'm, I feel like my heart is glowing, you know, cause I'm, I, I'm appreciating the conversation and, and I do have a, a big passion for this plant. Yeah, we can tell. That's great. That's so good. Now I really wanted to talk about cannabis today because it's, it's medicinal uses, it's, it's mainstream, it's all well known now, but at the same time, it still seems kind of shrouded in mystery. So I appreciate so much what you've, what you've explained to us today and shared with us. It's interesting the way you have mentioned your relationship with your First Nations neighbors, uh, your appreciation of some of the Asian tradition, because much of both of them that I know they know about the land, they know about the plants, but it's a lot of it is oral knowledge. And, you know, so the fact that you incorporate all of that, 
and you are so enthusiastic about it all. It just sort of all blends together into one amazing person called Alexis Burnett. So that, that's amazing. Thank you. We run some programs and, you know, I'll, I'll start by saying, you know, you can, you can learn a lot of all the, a lot of this stuff all on your own if you want, but it can be a little tricky to navigate, especially the cannabis stuff. So that's part of why I, I started to run some courses on it. So we have sort of two main cannabis courses. One is the cannabis home growers course which teaches you how to grow cannabis from seed to harvest and beyond. So we, we work with people throughout the growing season. And, and the nice thing is that it, it is an online program, but people grow their plants at home. And then we meet every two weeks throughout the growing season on Zoom, and we can share our thoughts, our ideas. We can ask questions, um, share photos of our plants, and I can kind of guide people through the growing season. So I've really enjoyed that one. We've done it for the last three growing seasons in a row. So in April, we'll, we'll bring in a new cohort of students and begin that journey again for the fourth time. So that's, um, I, I really enjoy that course. There's home, there's videos. I think we have somewhere around 30, 35 hours of video lessons. And there's PDF handouts. And then we have the live sessions as well through Zoom, our new cannabis medicine making course. And in that program, we it's similar to the growing one that we have live sessions on Zoom that are recorded. And then we have uh, somewhere around 20 hours. You know, I think the growing course is maybe 40 hours and the, the you know, medicine making is 20 ish hours of, of lessons and handouts. And we basically just, we, we go through a lot of what I talk today in extensive detail. So we talk about the cannabinoids, we talk about the endocannabinoid system, the terpenes. Um, we talk about how to prepare your cannabis for making medicine, how to go through the decarboxylation process. And then we go through making oils and butters and tinctures and glycerites and uh, a lot on dosing and calculating dosage and that. So um, yeah, and, and that's a course we're going to just keep running every year. We generally open it up once or twice a year for new students we have a great engaged online community as well, where people share and ask questions. So we have our own private sort of forum online where people can, I share resources and I can answer questions that people have. And uh, I'm just, I really like the format of it, just how we can be connected online. For, and we have people from all across the country and, and around the U.S. as well and even a few people from further away, but we can uh, connect live and then they can work through the course at their own pace and they have sort of lifetime access so they can go back and watch the videos. And, and that's been, uh, been really fun. Um, I'll probably start to offer some in-person workshops again, when, when the time comes for cannabis anyways, but uh, those are our two sort of flagship programs right now is the cannabis home growers course and the cannabis medicine making. Um, so you can find out all that info on our website at organicgrowcanada.com. There's probably a link somewhere below the podcast here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If people have questions after you're welcome to send me, send me an email. I'll try my best to get back to you in a relatively timely fashion, but definitely reach out if there's questions and things like that. I do have some cannabis seeds too. So if someone's interested in cannabis seeds, you could reach out to me directly and we could have a little chat around, uh, around that as well. But yeah, that's sort of in a nutshell, some of what we're offering. Now is a time where we sort of plan our whole year. So I'm excited to sort of see where uh, all the different offerings that we'll have this coming year as well. So. so yeah, absolutely. We will put all of the links into the show notes. That's great. And there we go. Lots of editing to bring our conversation down to just the basics. As I mentioned at the beginning, I encourage you to listen to our full conversation. The links are in the show notes. As I was prepping this episode, I went to Alexis' website, and he is offering both his courses this spring. So check those out if you're interested in learning more. His website URL is in the show notes, too. Cannabis is becoming quite mainstream, and education is always valuable. If you have thoughts on today's show, please talk to us. Leave comments where you're listening, or if you're listening at the Boomer Woman's podcast at boomwithabang.com, scroll to the bottom of the page and talk to us there. Leave stars and reviews, please, where you can. They help us grow. For early access of upcoming episodes, there's a sign up under this conversation at Boom With a Bang. Share this episode and both episodes with Alexis from last year with some friends, men and women. His knowledge is amazing, and he is so generous in sharing it. 
Thanks for tuning in today. I'll be interviewing a really interesting guest next week. Lorianne Campbell has two focuses. Foci? <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, eating disorders and handwriting analysis. That will be an interesting conversation. Have a great rest of the week.